we come to Indonesia today with many positives. GDP growth around 5% among the higher of the large economies, uh, inflation around 5%, not bad in these tough times, positive trade balance, low to debt to GDP ratio, growing population, and political stability. There are some negatives, like everyone else, we're affected by the hostilities in Europe and the China slowdown, uh, manufacturing slowdowns is, is causing layoffs in a number of sectors, especially textiles, footwear, and electronics. There is a history of legal uncertainty for investors here, which is often uh, experienced in the, in the resource sector and other areas, and the heavy dependency on state or enterprises to drive the economy. Still, Indonesia has much to recommend it to foreign investors with 26% of the population under 15 in stark contrast to the rest of a, uh, aging Asia. It's also maintained a careful diplomatic neutrality, as I mentioned. Um, it's the world's fourth largest country, et cetera. We all know this. Some of the positive areas for investment are, are nickel and uh, electric vehicle, vehicle transportation, but it's not just natural resources related items where Indonesia is strong. Jakarta has become one of the Southeast Asia's most successful incubators of new technology companies. And this is growing very rapidly. Another factor has been uh, Indonesia's sound macroeconomic management. The uh, finance minister, of course, is a respected man uh, former manager, managing director of the World Bank. Bank Indonesia uh, leaders have great credibility um, and the government is restoring its pre-pandemic deficit cap of budget deficit cap of 3% of GDP. Uh, and it's uh, uh, really benefiting the, the rupiah has been relatively stable in the face of uh, rising interest rates in the West and a stronger US dollar. We've had a number of um, uh, important investments in the green energy space. Uh, Indonesia just formalized a collaboration with the Australian renewable energy company, Sun Cable, taking the first steps to create energy, an energy distribution network that should unlock about $100 billion in green industries economic potential in the archipelago over the next decade. So there are very number of strengths. There are of course risks, there are risks everywhere. We do have inconsistency, lack of legal certainty, the reliance on state or enterprises. This is not a particular knock on Indonesia's state or enterprises, it's just the problems and the burdens that state or enterprises have. They can't be competitive. They're too much uh, dependent on political whims and Indonesia sometimes suffers from the same thing. Uh, there is a concern about the management of the economy post Jokowi. We hope the next finance team that comes in in 2024 uh, will be equally uh, cautious and conservative and manage with the same skill that this team has for the last decade and longer. Uh, economic nationalism uh, springs its head. There's talk of a cartel for battery minerals, which will violate pretty much every trade agreement Indonesia has signed. So that'll be a difficult workaround for people. Manufacturing overall, Indonesian manufacturing sector is not strong. It's dropped from 30% of GDP 20 years ago to about 19% today. And so there are some uh, other uh, areas here because of domestic content rules, because of non-tariff barriers, Indonesia has not attracted its fair share of investment that's moving south from China into places like Vietnam and over to places like Bangladesh. And the proper property debt is, 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 an, is, is a bit of a concern. It's uh, not public sector debt. So it's probably, it, it isn't, it won't be, it won't develop into the same kind of problem that China is having, but it is there and something to be concerned with. So the next 24 months should be pretty good. The most uh, serious uh, near-term economic challenges will come from the international environment rather than domestic. China's slowdown will inevitably affect both commodity prices and its ability to continue its role as a major foreign investor. The domestic challenges will be to continue to make progress in improving social welfare and equality while maintaining macro stability, as well as funding this upgrading that I mentioned. Nevertheless, the government will continue to exercise tight control on the budget and should be able to return to a 3% deficit cap within the next several years. So the bottom line, the bottom line is given Indonesia's long tradition of conservative fiscal management, 
the significant level of infrastructure investment by the current administration and the lack of significant political or social challenges to the current economic policy environment, we expect very stable government and little change in business operating conditions over the next two years. The biggest transition risk in 2024 may well be the appointment of a weaker finance minister who cannot effectively defend the prudent fiscal policies of the last decade in the face of strong fiscal challenges that inevitably come from a democratically elected parliament. This consistency, coupled with continued prudent fiscal policies, which we consider highly likely, is proving more attractive to foreign investors in the sectors that are open to them. This will support growth. SOEs will continue to dominate in many areas of the economy, um, making acceleration beyond five to five and a half percent unlikely, but still that's a good number. Political stability and the continuation of current economic investment policies should provide steady growth in the five to 6% range through 2024. And despite the expected global challenges and around 5% plus thereafter. So I think we're looking at a very positive picture. Uh,